the experiment which uh, I am going to perform today is to determine the wavelength of sodium light by Newton's ring method. So what I have to do is to I have to determine the wavelength of the sodium light uh, which is a uh, monochromatic light uh, by Newton's ring method. So the apparatus I need is optical arrangement for Newton's ring, traveling microscope, sodium lamp and short focus convex lens, reading lens and a spherometer. So uh, the apparatus are like this, this is my uh, sodium lamp arrangement, uh, this is my sodium lamp from which I am getting the light source, this is my uh, optical uh, system for the Newton's ring, uh, you can have this, this is my eyepiece, this is uh, the vernier through which we are going to get uh, our reading here inside you can see a glass plate which is uh, there at 45 degree angle okay which is fixed inside is and i i want this is plano convex lens and this is a plain glass plate so this is plano convex because uh, one side if you put it here and if you rotate it this is rotating and if i reverse it you see it's not rotating so this side this side is plane and this side is a convex so that's why it is a plano convex so this i need this arrangement and this system uh, and this is my sodium lamp this is all we need to perform and then i need a spherometer you all know spherometer you have done use this in class 12 this we need to find out the radius of curvature of this plano convex lens okay so these are the apparatus which i am going to use to determine the sodium wavelength of the sodium lamp sodium light uh, using the newton's ring method the formula which i am going to use is the first one is r equal to a squared by 6h plus h by 2 this is i am going to need to uh, calculate the radius of curvature of this plano convex lens by using the spherometer where uh, you can see this H A is A is the length uh, between these uh, the legs of uh, the distance between the legs of these uh, spherometer. So this is uh, this is like if I if put here and press here, so I'll get uh, uh, three dots three dots on the paper. And if I if I if I um, arrange these three dots, so I, I'll get the distance between the legs. So A is A here is the distance between the legs of the spherometer. H is basically uh, the height this is plano convex lens so using the spherometer I'll, I'll, I'll have to calculate the, the if this is a curve I have to calculate like this if you see this is a plano convex lens so I have to measure this height uh, this is this is my edge which is using the uh, play, uh, spherometer so by using a and H I can calculate the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens and then uh, this is the wavelength uh, of uh, the sodium light uh, we have to calculate it uh, where I am going to use the R which is uh, the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens and then dn plus p square minus dn square so these dn is uh, square is dn is the diameter of the ring the, the, the ring the Newton zinc which we are going to show you that this is uh, the diameter of the nth ring and square of the and this is diameter of the n plus p -th ring uh, square of this and then 4 times p p is the value of which we are going to take n plus p here so using this and this uh, we can calculate the wavelength of the sodium light so the arrangement as you can see that uh, here that this is our microscope and then i have a microscope uh, there is a glass plate at 45 degree so you can see that this is my microscope and then this is this is my glass plate which is at which is at 45 degree you know it is fixed here so the light here so uh, and you can see that the light source is here and the source is coming falling to a uh, uh, lens uh, which is there inside itself 
so this is a, a source which is coming from inside and that's falling on this lens so that the lines why i'm using this lens so that the source this is focal so the lines which are coming from here it's got parallel so use of this lens is to get these uh, uh, light source parallel to which which falls on this uh, glass plate which is at 45 degree angle and then from here in below this glass plate I'm going to use uh, uh, this glass plate and plano convex lens, which is this arrangement. So you can see that if I if I put it, if I put this arrangement, this is like this. If I put this glass plate and this here inside below this, uh, which is 45 degree glass plate. So and then I'll put this arrangement here in front of this light source in front of this light source you can see so the light source so the light source which are coming from here through the lens is, is getting parallel and it, it is it is it is being falling on this uh, glass plate and from here it is coming uh, below uh, towards uh, the plano convex lens and then here after interference and I'm, I, I can see the ring from this eyepiece so you can see here that the source from the source, the light, uh, the light which is parallel falling on this, and then coming here, and then this is my plano convex lens, and this between this glass plate and this, there is a air film, and as from the center move from the center towards uh, the edge of this, the air thickness goes on increasing, and here here the interference takes place, and then because of that we get a ring here, formation of the ring, uh, like this is the dark one and then then dark one and then so this kind of uh, fringe you will get black and white black and matlab, this is white and black white on the rings you will you will see here uh, with the help of uh, the eyepiece okay so uh, this is what the arrangement is looks like and then uh, i'm going to use this formula and uh, we'll talk about the observation table and then how, how so first before that we have to know that how to take the readings okay another scale uh, which uh, we are going to use is like this this is my main scale and this is my uh, word near scale so you can see this is from 0 5 10 15 concentrate over here 20 25 30 40 and 45 so it has 50, 50 circular division and then this is my main scale you can see this is in millimeter so 0 to 5 to 10 so you can see 0 to 5 5 to 10 it is divided into uh, so divided into 10 10 division so 0 0.5 1 1.5 so one main scale the least count of this main scale is 0.5 millimeter so you can also you can also see here that if I, if I put a zero, let me let me come to zero position, or let me fix like so. If I match this line with the zero and okay so this is my zero is matching with this line here you can see and this is zero so if i make a complete rotation if i come from zero to zero again 40 45 and zero so you can see that uh, the motion on the main scale is 0.5 okay so if i give a com two rotations from 0 to 0 again you can see that it comes to 1 millimeter so this is like when I give a complete one rotation and the motion on the main scale is known as the pitch okay so the pitch is 0.5 mm and the total number of uh, uh, division on this circular scale is like 0 to 50 50 50 division so we can we can find out the least count of the microscope so uh, you can see that the number of division on the vernier scale or the value of one division on the main scale is 
0.5 millimeter or you can see 0 0.05 centimeter and the number of division in the vernier scale as uh, this is my vernier is 50 so you can write number of division vernier scale is 50 then least of the microscope is 0.5 millimeter divided by 50 so that this will come this will give you the least count of the microscope so this is how we are going to um, uh, uh, this is scale uh, to read uh, the different uh, readings of uh. so now we we are going to arrange it like this is my uh, source which is the light source which is coming parallel uh, uh, through uh, through this lens the sodium light source coming through this lens which is parallel which has to fall on this glass plate so uh, which is falling on this glass plate and below this glass plate i am putting my this is plano convex and this over this plane this uh, glass plate so i am facing towards this so you can see that the light is coming and this is my eyepiece so by adjusting this eyepiece uh, you can see that see a ring a neutron string uh, like this so you have seen that uh, this is a kind of ring uh, with, with a dark in the center and then bright then dark and bright and then dark and bright and there are kind of uh, a spectrum or neutron string you will see that so what we have to do we have to find um, the diameter of these these rings like we can find it like this uh, you can see if if i if i take the reading at this side and the reading at this side so different between this this will give me uh, the diameter of some nth ring okay similarly if i add some one two three four four to this so then uh, for this ring and th this side if the t t uh, reading of this ring then th the difference between this will give me the t n plus p the diameter of this n plus p -th ring so and the difference of this will will give me mm, so from here you can see that so this is the diameter of the nth ring and th this is the diameter of the d n plus uh, p -th ring so we, what we have to do is like when when uh, using this uh, telescope or eyepiece we we are we are uh, seeing that this kind of newton string then using uh, this using this screw i can move through the ring here and here so i can move through the ring uh, from this position to this position from this position to this position and choosing uh, the every bright ring, uh, dark, dark ranges, dark, dark um, fringes. I can put the cross wire here and take the reading. Move to the next ring and put the cross wire and take the reading here. Okay, so uh, this is what we have to do, and uh, uh, let's let's move to uh, the observation. So the observation table gives uh, uh, the first. Uh, Thing is the number of rings so how many number of rings uh, uh, we have to count it like they they are using 16 11 14 10 9 and kind of thing and then uh, this is microscope reading so left hand side reading and the right hand side reading and then diameter will be left hand side minus r right hand side so as i have, i have told you so this is this is my uh, uh, as I have told you, this is my uh, dark fringes. So this is left side reading, and this is this will be right side reading. Okay, so uh, this is le I left minus right will give you the diameter, and this is the diameter square, and then you know that d n plus p square minus d n square. Okay, so I uh, will discuss about this later. So uh, as you can see, for example. Uh, uh, this is the number of rings. So I have chosen the 60th ring, 14th, 14th ring, 12th ring, 10th ring, 8th rings, and because seven, this, this is all uh, the dark or between, between dark and uh, bright fringes ring. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. And then this is, uh, you can see the left hand reading and right 
hand side reading. So the the left microscope reading will be like main scale reading and the circular scale reading. So the main scale reading will be uh, so as you can see that the main scale reading will be on this scale and this will be my circular scale reading. Okay. So this is this is how this will be main scale reading, circular scale reading, and this the total will be main scale reading plus circular scale reading multiplied by the least count. Similarly, for the left right side reading of the circular uh, ring, and then we will uh, take the difference. Similarly, go on 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 2, and 4. So this is for uh, uh, for for the left side reading. So when you come to the four, this is one, two, and then again, then come to this dice frames, and then come here also. So then here also, this is if it's two, so then this is this is uh, this is the other side of the two. Okay, this is other type two. Put the cross right here and take the reading, like here. This is my two, and then come here. This is for the right side reading. Come here, here. This is right side main scale reading, and the one near scale reading. Then move from 8 to 10 and then similarly up to 16 so this will be the left side of uh, reading of the 16th fringe and the right side reading of the 16th fringe similarly for all the 2 4 6 and 8 so now what i have is, is the left side reading of all the 16 14 and the right side reading of all the 16 14 12 and this so this if i if i take the difference of this side and this side I'll get the diameter of the 16th ring. Similarly, if you get the uh, eighth ring, difference between this to this, so I'll get the diameter of the eighth ring. So what has been done is the so left minus right. Okay, so this is left right reading and this is right right reading. To this minus this, I'll get 6.79. And then do that, take the square of this le uh, left minus R this. And what is uh, dn plus p square and dn square? So this is basically choose the value of p, choose the value of p very smartly so that so all the observation takes into account. So if I choose uh, the value of p as 8, then what is there that this is 16 minus, if I have difference of 16 to 8, I'll get and this is 14 to 6 and this is 12 to 4 and this is 10 to 2. So 10 minus 2 is 8, 12 minus 4 is 8. So if I take P is 8, then I'm going to get uh, the use of all the observation which I have taken. So this will be 16, uh, the reading of the 60th ring, and then 16 minus 8. This is the reading of the 8th ring. So this minus this, so this value minus this value is this value. So then I have... So what this represents? So this represents uh, the difference square of the difference of the square of the eight rings. Okay. So if I divided it by eight, then then I'll give the width of this the diameter of uh, uh, the ring. Okay. So then I'll take the mean of this because all these have to be same. Okay. So I. Uh, uh, in the formula which I'm going to use is dn square minus dp square I can get this is this is the mean of this value I'm going to put it here and p I know this is 8 4 is the constant quantity and then r I am going to find out using the spherometer and then if I use here I'll, I can find the wavelength of the sodium light. Now to calculate uh, the radius of curvature of uh, this uh, plano Convex surface. Uh, uh, I am going to use the spherometer. You all know how to use the spherometer. We have two scale here. This is this is uh, my main scale. This is zero to ten. Zero to ten. This is in millimeter, and this is my uh, circular scale, which is uh, uh, divided into uh, hundred division, zero to hundred division. So you know how to do how to use the spherometer. First on first we will use it on uh, the plain glass plate. Uh, we will put it on the plain glass plate and try to see that and try to see that all the all the legs all the of the legs three legs and as well as the middle one is by uh, is touches exactly uh, to uh, the plain glass plate by using a, a, a piece of paper so if i if i take a piece of paper uh, 
and if I use the piece of paper so that it, it, it's, it's really touching everywhere so you can see here whether this thing is touching clearly or not okay similarly for the metal one you can see also if it's clearly touching the surface of uh, the plain glass plate or not so the moment it touches then I have to I have to take the reading of this 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 on the main glass uh, on the main scale what is the reading and uh, on the circular scale what is the reading then this will be the reading on the plain glass plate okay and I'm not going to explain you you know better how to take the reading uh, using the spherometer then I'll put this plano convex lens uh, like this is uh, the curves this is the plane surface so I'll put it like this so now uh, uh, this is the convex surface so now I'll put this uh, glass plate this spherometer here and then and then try to find out uh, if, if I'll move uh, is little bit upward then uh, you have to see that the all the legs fitted very carefully that the, all the legs fitted on this curved surface clearly use the uh, piece of paper to do it and then after doing this try to find uh, what is uh, the reading on this main scale and the circular scale so if I if I take then uh, you have to write it here uh, the reading on the plain glass plate main scale per circular scale and the least count and then on the convex surface of the less main scale so take the differences uh, of these two because you know uh, uh, if I if I you take uh, the reading on the plain glass plate on the plain glass plate and then if I if I put this on this so this this reading and this reading this will give me the value of H okay so uh, take the difference of these two this will give the value of h and then uh, the another thing i i need a so find out uh, the, the distance between the, these three legs okay and then use the average of that in this uh, a so like in our case a is 4.1 like using uh, uh, the three three dots of the legs and you have to find what is the these three distance and use this at this is 4.1 centimeter h is this is 0.1933 centimeter here and then this is two so this is 1449484 centimeter is the radius of curvature and this dn square minus dnp square here if we take the mean of this this comes out to be like in our case is 0.22 you can use uh, this value you can use the value of r and p and this the mean value of this you can find the value of uh, the wavelength of the sodium light so uh, now let's uh, let's uh, uh, review this this is my sodium lamp this is um, telescope and then i have a 45 degree uh, lens a 45 degree uh, glass plays at 45 degree fix we have a uh, glass plate and 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 a play, play no convex lens i have to put it like this uh, the plane surface is above and then i have to put it like this here below this uh, surface okay and then face it towards the light source and then by a little bit of adjustment of this ips you'll see uh, you will see uh, uh, alternate dark and bright fringes and I have to note down uh, the readings of uh, these fringes and you know how to note it down and then uh, uh, find out the radius of curvature of the glass plate using the spherometer and using the formula to calculate the wavelength of the sodium light using these two formula. Thank you.